Well, certainly are key elements from the business perspective, those three, four roadmaps you mentioned. I'd now like to turn, on the, uh, turn to the president of a company that's in one of the key sectors, uh, both for uh, the expansion of American business in Russia and equally importantly, the development of a healthy Russia. And that's Vadim Vlasov, who's president of Novartis, the, the global pharmaceutical company. And perhaps you could comment a bit about the decision-making process for your investment in St. Pete. And uh, intellectual property rights are also an issue that swirl around the pharmaceutical sector. So, Vadim? We started late, and I know some of our guests have other... Thank you, Andrew, very much, uh, distinguished colleagues. I would like to share with you some practical experience of our company, Novartis, in our investment operations in project uh, in Russia. Well, I think that among pharmaceutical companies, we are perhaps one of the few that have gone so far from the point of view of investments into the Russian market. And our experience could be interesting not only for other pharmaceutical companies, but also uh, for many other companies working in high technology sector. Novartis is a multinational corporation. Even though our headquarters uh, is situated in Switzerland, production and research centers are located in lots of countries of the world. In Russia, we are the largest company in the pharmaceutical market, and you can find us in every segment here. We talk about original preparations, about generics, about vaccines, and um, also different medical equipment, um, especially medical equipment in eye operations. Well, our decision to localize our production in Russia, to actually build a plant in Russia, was driven by two factors. Firstly, we wanted to get closer to the consumer market. And in Russia, we believe we have a great opportunity, a growing market. And the second factor was that a few years ago, the Russian government um, announced that they are going to implement Pharma 2020 program. And it was said that in the list of life-saving drugs by the year 2015 and then by 2020, uh, there would have to be a certain share of medicines, uh, of drugs produced on the territory of the Russian Federation. In the pharmaceutical sector, it has been long established that most of the companies are private-owned. And that is why here in, in the pharmaceutical market, we really cannot talk about national boundaries. So that is why it doesn't really matter where the owners of the company live, but it is important where the production is located and how deep localization process has gone through. Then who is paying taxes and who is working at these companies? So those two factors I mentioned, they just brought us to understanding that we really have to build a plant in Russia. The decision was made two years ago, and now we are constructing a plant in Nova Orlovsk region. Uh, this is to the north of St. Petersburg, within the boundaries of the city. It would be a big plant producing 1.5 dry drugs, capsules, uh, pillows, pellets. So I would like to share our experience in two uh, spheres. Well, we are constructing our plant in a special economic zone. Why we made this decision and what did it give us? So we understand that in Russia we work in the field of in perfect legislative field. You know that they talked a lot about special economic zones that would be the areas where companies, if they go there, they will receive certain incentives in taxes, certain economic financial incentives. And it sounded really great at that time. But it is very important to see how ready the zone is to actually receive uh, the company. So before you enter the special economic zone, you have to see how prepared is the infrastructure in this zone. And I don't want to say that perhaps we can 
talk about insufficient operation on the part of uh, Ministry of Economy or maybe local authorities. But just unfortunately, we have to understand if a company just only wants to invest, it has only one vis-a-vis. -vis. It can be regional authorities, municipal authorities. But here we are in this three zone. In this special zone, we have three lateral cooperation. And if everything has been already done at the territory of the zone, the, lo but lo the local authorities, for example, uh, have not yet uh, connected some heat infrastructure. In this case, we have a delay in time for all the three parties. So that is why you sh maybe you shouldn't be the first company to enter such a special economic zone, or if you are the first one still, you really have to conduct a three-lateral agreement between local authorities, economic zone, and the producer itself. Uh, that would, should be an agreement on all the deadlines. So all the deadlines have to be stipulated very accurately. Because, for example, when a company wants to enter the zone, they would give you all the terms and conditions you will have to comply to. And still they talk about you being pre a privileged one. Well, but right now I can say we have really wonderful cooperation with St. Petersburg Economic Zone, with local authorities. And we can see that everybody works really hard to comply to the deadlines, but I am pretty sure that most of you know how difficult it is sometimes uh, to work with infrastructural projects, especially in energy, gas infrastructure, and unfortunately those are not always municipal authorities that can work out all the problems. What else I wanted to say? The bottlenecks in legislature, well, unexpected gap for us in the law on state purchases uh, concerning pro intellectual rights. And in pharmaceuticals, that is an absolutely important issue. And I'm t talking here about branded drugs. Many people say that pharmaceutical companies receive immense revenues. But once you look at the annual report, you can see that after you pay the dividends, about 90% of all the profit goes for, for R&D, because only one or maybe two molecules out of 100 under research, so if you take the zero point time of the research, only one or two molecules will become a commercial drug. So this means that creating one or two branded drugs costs about one to one point five billion dollars. And this is not a myth. This is a reality. So only a blo uh, we usually have only one blockbuster drug on 100 research. So that is why for us intellectual property, property uh, safety is absolutely important. So this means that uh, the uh, company that developed the drug would be able to receive uh, the return on its investment into R&D. Because once you do not have this protection, your drug can go out into the market and become just a generic one. So that just happened so that uh, the patent chamber tries to see that those the proprietary rights would not be violated, but the law on state purchases does not make the purchaser liable for liable for proving that the, uh, that the drugs they're going to buy under the state order will be compliant with the proprietary uh, um, uh, So formally, this means that the state, for example, can buy uh, uh, counterfeit pro product, product and they didn't have actually to prove to prove it. So that is why this means that we ourselves have to go to the court and try to prove that we had a patent on the drug. So in reality, what does this mean? That we have to wait until this contract, the concluded contract, will start being implemented. That takes months. After that, we go to the court again. We are talking about uh, several months of court procedures. And even if we win the litigation, so many months would pass that we would not have anybody to go to to ask for our 
remuneration because usually those, uh, for example, the patients would have already received that counterfeit product. And thanks God, if it would be, it would not influence their health. So unfortunately, we face this problem only. Um, so right now, after WTO membership, after Russia entered WTO, together with Ministry of Economy and some of our partners, we are uh, right now preparing uh, our proposition on perfection of the law on state procurement, and we really hope that would somehow have some good impact. But once again, talking about proprietary rights, there is still a huge road ahead of us. And it is very important for us to understand that to attract foreign investors to Russia, you have to have the rules set. If you do not have rules that would secure the positions of proprietors, trust me, it would be really difficult to attract investors. Thank you.